This is an SM Media Production. Hi everyone and welcome to episode 9 of SM Media's Road to Cheltenham 2022. I'm Scott McPike, it's an absolute pleasure to be your host as always. This is our final show before the, the busy Christmas period and we're delighted to be joined by as always from the Scottish Daily Mail, Callum McClurkin. Callum, it's getting close and it? it's getting close to a busy, busy period. Yeah, getting there. Um, close King George's uh, Boxing Day's real Christmas for, for racing fans. Isn't yeah, it? definitely. Just your dinner. Once you get your dinner finished in the, the 25th, all your focused on is what's going to win the King George. But yeah, a busy, busy period lined up. We're going to recap, obviously, all the horses that have caught our eye since our last episode. We're going to do a bumper Christmas preview. We're going to take a look at all the great ones that are going to happen between now and the 29s. And we'll add to our anti post picks. But we first of all get some questions. First and foremost, is appreciated the biggest threat to Honeysuckle in the champion hurdle? Obviously, we had the news during the week that appreciates it will not be going over fences. He's suffered a small setback, so he's going to be aimed at a hurdle campaign. Callum, the only thing I would say about the, the appreciated news is I did think there would maybe be one of one of appreciated at Fernie Hall or maybe dropped to hurdles, but I wouldn't be so keen on him when you hear he suffered a small setback. I know it's maybe just a wee niggle or something like that, but it wouldn't fill you a lot of confidence, especially when he's not had a run as yet. Uh, no, but there's two ways to look at that question. Uh, on on the on the, the premise of it, yeah, he is the biggest threat to Honeysuckle because yeah. he's unexposed. We, we don't really know what can what can be. I mean, Honeysuckle holds basically everyone else on all known form. So yeah, the fact that somebody new coming out of the block does make him automatically the biggest threat to. Him. Um, that's countered by a big horse having a setback, um, and I, th- I just think the ground has gone completely against him all season. That's why they haven't got him out. He's probably yeah. picked up a niggle as a result of that. Um, he was lucky in the supreme in the terms that the ground was at its softest in the open race and it dried yeah. out quite quickly for the champion hurdle. So if it was a good ground spring meeting, I can see them just leaving him at home and waiting for Punchestown, to be honest. Yeah. Um, yeah. And Willie Mullins does tend to give a little bit of time to those that have small setbacks they need it so they've shelved his chasing campaign because he's got a setback so it's significant enough for him not to really go down his normal route so yeah um, you'd be looking for him to contest the Irish champion hurdle before that's what I was thinking like, they're saying they're saying he's going to be a couple of weeks and he'll be back in training you're probably aiming him for that Irish champion hurdle and then he's maybe going in if, if he wins that if he beats Honey Suckle then obviously he deserves to go for a champion hurdle it's only one run before that. That's especially now where you're a lot of Will and Willie's horses haven't had the run. You're not taking a lot of confidence in the fact they're maybe only going to have one run before the festival. Yeah, at least he'll get a run maybe. Um, yeah. Throwing him in a jumping hurdle without a run and, you know, he was a novice before then, that, that would be a big, big risk. Um, you'd be more inclined to do that maybe towards the end of the season, like at the age of a bunch of stems. The thing, the thing is, even if even if they did that, because of how weak the division is, it would probably still be second favourite. Yeah, probably. Um, he'd probably, probably joint second favourite with Sharjah. Mm, yeah. People would kind of want a reliable each way option. He, 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 fit, he fits that bill, doesn't he? So, yeah, it's, it's, it's an interesting one. And they just need to follow him quite closely and see if he see if he does get a run under his belt before the champion hurdle. But it would be interesting, and I think they need it soft as well. I don't think they'd run him uh, coming back for a setback on anything worse, anything better than really good to soft. Nah, probably not. But we'll move into the next one. After champs winning the log walk, would you aim him at the stairs hurdle and stick with hurdles, or would you go and try and repeat, try and improve for the gold cup stairs? I. I think you that proves the point that the stairs is a he's a better hurdler than he has a chaser. Yeah, um, this is another interesting one. Um, I don't think it's that straightforward decision for them to just oh he's a better hurdler than just six stairs hurdle. He's been trained 
to be a Gold Cup winner. He's been bred to win a Gold Cup. Yeah. He named as a Gold Cup winning horse. He'll be 10 next year. There is only one Gold Cup. The Steers Huddle isn't. It's a great one in its own right, but it's not the Gold Cup. Kind of no. And, and this horse kind of, he did win an RSA. And it, it was meant to be a stepping stone, really, to go back to to go back to fences. Yeah. That dramatically changed now that he's won a long walk by you know, touching off Tim Hill. I'm not I'm not terribly convinced. I think he'll just skill him over fences again and we'll make a decision later in time. But if he if he's over his back injury and he shows us signs of promise, I wouldn't be I wouldn't be overly surprised if they went gold cup with him. Well that's the thing as well, is when you think about it, the only trip he's ran an open company over three miles was the Gold Cup over fences. The the best he's jumped was that two mile game spirit. That was the best he's jumped. Was it because though he was it was a quicker pace? It was I just don't know if the Gold Cup I just don't think he's his body suits a Gold Cup, like a Gold Cup trip. I just think he, he puts too much it it gets too much his fences, I think. I think you saw over hurdles, he just, it wasn't taking as long, it wasn't taking as big a stride and it just, I think he just flicked over them a bit better. I thought he, I thought he was actually really good on Saturday. Yeah, you don't really know what's happening with his back. Um, he obviously had a very disrupted preparation last season uh, which kind of forced him to run over two miles beforehand. Um, he jumped okay. Uh, he, he's pacier than, than, than a lot of people kind of think as well. So, I mean, he is, is versatile in, in that regard that you can run him over really any trip over fences. What happened? Did his back just go at the Gold Cup or yeah. did it go up then? Um, how, how, what, what to a certain extent is he over that back injury? It's probably easier keeping him sound over hurdles, isn't it? So, yeah, I, I would be surprised if they did go Gold Cup route, but it, it, for the soundness of the horse, you'd probably better keep him over hurdles because he is more comfortable over hurdles in yeah. uh, his profile. But he was he was meant to be a, the Gold Cup horse, so do you abandon that dream entirely now? Um, it's, a, it's a big, big, big decision for him to make. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's one of those ones that we'll see. He'll probably about again. I'd imagine either we'll, the next the next run he has will determine what journey he's going down. So we'll, we'll keep an eye on Champ. Final question, what is your favourite Christmas racing memory in recent years? You go first. Um, Silverwing Anko Conti winning his first King George at 7-2 to two in 2013 was probably the best one. Um, it was probably my first genuine big big race bet as well. Um, couldn't believe he was longer than Dynast and things like that. I mean, uh, it was a champagne fever, wasn't it? Champagne fever ran that and just didn't stay. Or was that right? He, he ran, yeah. He, he was he was good. He was good that day. He, I just couldn't. It was one of those where I just couldn't really see him getting beaten at all. Yeah. So that was a good. That was a good one. I. I mean, there's there's a few. Obviously, caught a star one in the the King George one of one of six times. I remember, funnily, the. Do you remember that? I think it was that same year, two thousand thirteen. It was the the new one in my tent of yours in the Christmas hurdle. Yeah, my that team. was a that was a that was a great duel. And the year the uh, two thousand and fifteen Vatour being outstayed in the line by card that was gutted. the most gutted I've ever been that was but obviously the two are just a, a lovely horse but yeah there's so many good memories I mean with Christmas I remember a few years ago uh, uh, in Ireland the Lexus remember Fleming Star mm -hmm. he got beat by I think it was Tidal Bay I think Ruby won out that was one of be Ruby's best ever rides Ruby beat him in the line, and I thought Fleming. I did think Fleming Star would probably be a Gold Cup horse, but Tidal Bay came up in the line. That was a really good memory. There are so many good Christmas memories. Obviously, if you want to, if you want to send your, yours in in the comments, then please do. We want to hear all your your Christmas racing memories. If you want to send a question as well for next week's episode, please also leave it in the comments or messages on Twitter. And that was our questions this week. We'll move into the recap. This is all the horses that have been catching my eye over the previous week since the last episode. Wednesday in Newbury, I am Maximus, a horse that has both been has been on both our radars. One kept on well. We won a, a novice hurdle. Sixteens for the Ballymore, he kept on well. You would say that's probably gives you an idea that he's probably going to go down that route. It looks as if he could probably deal with the, 
the step up and trip quite well. Yeah, in a normal year, I, I don't think they would normally rush him to go up and trip, but he'd shape as if he gets it. Given Nicky Henson has Constitution Hill, John Bond, yep. he, he might be inclined to go up and trip with the Ballymore with him. He certainly improved the exit of exit. It was a sharp enough track. Um, he improved for a more galloping kind of test. Um, he has a funny way of doing things with his leg action. It suggests that he needs soft ground, but yeah. um, he still kind of gets by. Uh, there's plenty of improvement to come. Um, his, his, his game's probably going to be chasing next season, I imagine, down the line. I think he, I think he's one novice that would, would improve for a fence. Yeah, I think, I think he's more for next year as well. I think he's a, a potential chaser. The same day, Silver Forever was made a, a very awkward jump at the first, but come on well, she recovered on well to win that race. Two miles, seven furlongs, so she's going to have no bother, I think, with the, the mare's chase if she goes there. She's about 10 to 1. She does look good. She does look good. She she did improve after that bad jump. But she, and would she need to improve to be the likes of Concertista? Yeah, probably, but she's probably one of the one of the eye catchers so far. Yeah, I thought she was a fantastic jumper. Uh, so, something about a dashing grey that gets everyone kind of mm-hmm. uh, excited about how, how they jump. And it was really clean, efficient. She, she put Chili Philly away quite well. Chili yeah. Philly was closing at the line, but she always had more in the tank. Um, and having that excess stamina is useful for a mare's chase. That seems to be the target. Paul Nichols didn't completely really the three miler for Brown Advisory. Um, that Ellie May get beat really by stamina. Um, she was outstayed that day. Yeah. Silver Forever could do that from the front and um, could make it a stamina test, which would probably put Concertista under a little bit of trouble because she'll have a bit of stamina doubts as well. Yep. So, tactically, you can see her um, going forward and, and maybe using that potential to to good use in terms of, stem, to, in terms of stamina anyway. Um, so, yeah, I, I think she has an each way chance. She will need to improve by at least another good £10, though. Yeah, I mean, I think you're right. I think if she if she was to improve, I think she'd be buying there. She's probably the clean, uh, cleaner jumper. And as you say, that's a big thing as well. She's won over that further trip. Concertista was outstayed in the Mayor's Hurdle last year. Ellie May was outstayed in the Mayor's Chase. So you've got the wee doubts about them. You don't, Silver Forever does have that stamina. And you just think, a wee bit of, if it was to come up a battle, I would fancy Silver Forever. But... I'm not going to tip her just yet because I don't think I'm we'll see. But I, yeah, I mean, Silver Forever was really good. I was really encouraged with that performance. Thursday and Ace, a nice mare as well for Willie Mullins. Brandy Love into 8 to 1 for the Mayor's Novice Hurdle. She did jump well. She looks, she does look good. That Mayor's Novice division is very open, but there's a lot of horses kind of coming through that look quite good. Yeah, there's a lot of candidates. Um, Willie Mullins has a lot of them, predictably. Yeah. Um, I think Brandy Love's probably the best jumper that we've had so far. Yeah, I would agree with that. Um, and I think she's probably probably the right favourite at the moment. And out of the out of the main protagonists, she'd probably be just about top of the list at the moment. Yeah, I thought I thought she was really good as well. I think she will improve for that. There's a few can I, there's a few in that division, for, particularly for Willie Mullins, who are can I justifying for favouritism statue a Grange. Ellie Bell, obviously, who we saw in the John Bourne race, but Brandy Love, I would probably say, was the cleanest jumper. But yeah, another good performance in that division. Same meeting in Nace, we had Capadano winning well. Safe to say this horse is a little bit keen, but 16s for the Brown Advisory. I fancied him last year for the County Hurdle. He didn't go. He went on to win a really good handicap over three miles. So you would suggest he does have the stamina to maybe go for a Brown Advisory. Steer, yeah. yeah. Um, does he have the class? Maybe not. It's nah, I wouldn't have seen what Galpin yeah. Jump does when he comes out. Um, he made a big mistake towards the end and did really well to come in. Yeah. And from that, um, Gal Domineil ran really similarly to his first run last year. In the he was travelling okay up until two out. He just, I think he just went out, to be honest. I think, he just, I think he just needed it a little bit. Yeah. He did it in his debut hurdle in the season. I wouldn't be so negative as, as people are about him, but... No, nah, but you would like to see him at, you, at the second as well. You yeah. would take you would take him as a maybe potential horse as well. Yeah, you would have liked to have seen Calder Mineo win. The second was okay. I mean, he, he kind of sets form. He's a bit of experience behind him. Yeah. Um, the the thing that we, we Willem Mills is a lot of he's a lot of horses going novice chasing. 
they're all back out each other. I didn't think Gal Domenio had that much scope over a fence like some others potentially would have. And I was surprised that they went over fences. I thought they'd keep him to hurdles and, and maybe try and go stairs hurdle route with him this year. But yeah. They obviously haven't. Um, I think he'll improve for that run. And he does look like another three miler potentially over over fences. And there's a lot of these three miles. Up. I mean, there's probably a good, a good five or six candidates for the Brown Advisory. Yeah, I mean, it's it's Capadano. You would, as you get the class team, maybe go for a Brown Advisory. I don't know. But Gaia Dumanil, I was expecting a bit more. But it was another. Again, as you say, these Willie Mullins horses are going to bump into each other at, at some point, but Capadano obviously won that well. Friday in Ascot, we have a two-to-one favourite for the Supreme called John Bond, and we, again, one wee thing before we get into the race, are you worried a bit about how slow they're beginning to start with this horse? I know it's twice. I've only, you only, yeah, you've only seen that twice in recent memory, and it's been both John Bond's races. Yeah, um, I think it's just used as a tactic to try and light him up and get him beat um, because a lot was made of him like being quite you know, fidgety and yeah. keen and awkward at the start. Um, it's just not the case anymore. Um, so I wouldn't, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't expect to see that again. Um, it was really good though, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah he had them off the bridle a long way out of a slow pace, which was quite impressive. Yeah. Uh, and it looked a the decent race on paper uh, beforehand. Have a lot of them ran to form? Probably not. Um, I don't like Naples Hill personally. I don't think he's a good enough jumper. And when the pace um, lifted, he jumped terribly. Yeah. And I like to move it. Just jump, yeah, jumping I, doesn't I, suit. I kind, of, kind of bombed out. He, he didn't really set it up for himself that well. He, just kind of jump. Expect, I was expecting him to put pace into the race, really. Yeah. So. I never got any a rhythm because he kind of liked to sound gallop. That's what he said at Cheltenham. I saw a wee tweet and I'm I saw a wee tweet and I'm not I, I don't know if that's the person watches it. He knows who he is. He's he's friends with both of us. And he was basically talking about that you can't really take this John Bond's performance into account because he's beat Colonel Mustard, who was second behind Bally Adam. Colonel Mustard's improved massively from then. Was he not second to Echoes and Rain? He was and she let that form down as well. Um, he, he's the thing about Colonel Muscle is he's, he's quite exposed. He's a second season novice, for instance. Know, but he, he didn't just beat it. John Bond didn't just beat him. He absolutely he, he dominated that race. Yeah, he won by two and a, two and a half lengths, and it could have been twenty if he really wanted to. I yeah, suppose. yeah. Colonel Muscle was there on the figures. Second season novice. He wasn't really top rank last season. He's not really going to be top rank this season. So. I can see the argument. Um, he's going to be better as well with a strong pace as well, I'd imagine, and a lead. So, you know, he's doing he's doing his donkey work and he's putting them away. Whether it's whether it's impressive enough to be two to one supreme favourite right now, and in, in, in a good looking renewal is the price is putting the price is putting you off. I agree. The price is putting people off. I agree with that. It's he's way too short. And as you say, we spoke about this all day. If, if Constitution Hill goes out and wins at Tolworth, which is the plan, if he wins it, it's impressive. As we as as he could, what what's he going to be? Like, do you know what I mean? That's be two to one joint favourite. Exactly. Right? It's just it seems to me like you've got a really you've really no margin for a good bit of value in this race, and it's tough. But John Boyne, I mean, you can't knock. Is he two to one though? Because his brother won the race. Yeah, Juvan won it in ninety four. Um, yeah, favourite. So yeah, it's his connections. Five hundred seventy thousand pounds he cost. You know the way he's going through things, and and how impressively he's doing it as well. I mean, it was still, it was still a grade two at the end of the day. Um, the, the time slow, but he, he's he's setting some decent sections. When yeah, he's, he's hitting the line hard, you know. And Nicky Henderson's record the Supreme is excellent, so he can't. I, he's a right favourite, but I think he probably he should be about three to one rather than rather than two to one. You'd think, but, but yeah. Um, it's an open year, we haven't really seen some of the stars come out yet, and, and that's I think that's why people are kind of waiting and slightly put off so far. Yeah, but impressive for John Bond. Don't know where to go next. Um, I, I would I would run him at Hayrock. Um, yeah, I would think that's I was going to suggest as he go for the Betfair hurdle, but he would get an insane rate. No, yeah, it's, it's Mark's okay. I, I am Maximus has got a really good mark. He's got one two nine, did I see? Like, which is ridiculous, yeah. Um, yeah, he'll need to split them up. Uh, 
I would go Hayda up grade two up there. You'd probably get a sound gallop if, if the ground's not too bad. Yeah. Sometimes they can get quite deep there, so they might they might avoid it. But that, that's where I would be inclined to go. Yeah, full marks for John Bond, though, an impressive performance. Ask it and as well on Friday we saw Pick Dory win the grade two by nine lengths. You can argue it was one it was a weak grade two. You're not really taking it. But twenty to one for the Turners, obviously previously known as a marsh. He would need to improve and he would need to sh- He's a good jumper, but he's, you can tell there's maybe a mistake in there, isn't there? He's much better on a flat track as well, so yeah, interest me certainly too much. But he's, he's, he's really good when he puts it all together. Yeah, I, I, thought it was a, I thought it was quite good as well. Well, I keep thinking about that race where uh, Nassalam won, where he, he was going to win that by half the track and obviously bombed out. Saturday in Asuka, I, I, I was really taken by this performance. La Home Press, I think is the right pronunciation of it. One by 13 lengths, he's 16 to 1 for the Turners. He jumped left, so you'd be encouraged if he went to Cheltenham. Does he appreciate a flat track? I don't know, but I was very encouraged by this performance. I thought he jumped really well. It was a good performance. Um, yeah, he's, he's an interesting kind of springer. I'm not really sure where they're going to go next with him, to be honest. Um, he'd have a chance to turn turning up there uh, in the two and a half miler. Um, oh, is he going to bump into Bob Ald and, and my Drogo, aren't they? So Yeah, that's the thing. But it's good. Each way claims on that evidence. Yeah, I was encouraged. I thought it was a good performance. We'll move into the long walk hurdle. Obviously, we spoke earlier about champ. Four to one for the stairs. Can I draw share and joint favourite classical dream? Time how was second. Let's obviously go to champ first. He did it, he, he did it well. You could see he was he was the only horse in the race who just looked as if he was cruising. Because I think Time Hill was off the bridle a long way out. We'll touch on him in a wee second, but champ was good. Champ was good. Yeah, he absolutely tanked through that race. Yeah. Grade one material, um, really fresh. A bit like when he's reappearance around at Sandown, so he, he really goes well fresh. Um, really keen, enthusiastic, uh, and he jumped quite well. Um, and John Joe Neal Jr.'s first, first grade one winner, so you'd imagine yeah. he'd be keeping that right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Let's move on to Time Hill. Obviously, my tip last week for the stairs... He hasn't moved in price actually. He stayed about kind of six, seven to one. He had every chance to win that race. I'm not. I'm not saying. I'm. I. It was obviously better. He, he travelled better than he did in France. That's without saying. But he had every chance to win that race. And you did make the point. I know you're going to probably touch on it. Is he becoming to the stage where he could be soft in the finish? I think he always has been. Mm. My opinion. Yeah. I. I I'm, I'm beginning to agree with you. I, I've not quite been his biggest ever fan. Um, he is a beautiful horse. He goes through races quite well. Um, he was the best in a weak division. Uh, he arguably still is up there. Um, but he, I, I think he finds ways to get beat more often than, than he should be. Um, the first evidence was it in the... The Bartlett. In the Albert Bartlett. Where he was a bit unlucky, but he's running on and he, he shapes as if well, he could get there and he doesn't. He was chin last year in the long walk. Um, yeah, same, same, similar idea. Obviously, Paisley Park came from miles away to win that, but he was going well and then just the bit, the, the horse that just did a bit more stamina just outstayed him. Yeah, Gant pulls out more. Um, horses just tend to pull out more to see him off. Um, He's a, he's a player. He has a chance, and he's not ridiculously soft, you know. But if it's two good stairs, you know, over the last, and he's one of them. Could you make the argument? Could you make the argument though that potentially I know Florin Porter will probably make the run, and would a stronger pace maybe suit Time Hill because there wasn't a lot of pace in the race at the start, was there? Yeah, uh, Paisley Park was running on, for instance. So I mean, yeah. So yeah, a stronger pace would have suited. Um, but he was he was he was getting he was there in plenty of time, and mm. Champ kind of pulled out more quite readily when he came up to him. So it's a testament to Champ's ability, of course. And Time Hill just need, maybe needed that step forward, and he might come on for that run as well. So he, he still might improve. He's young enough to still improve, um, but he just he just gets touched off too often in that manner for my liking. Though. Yeah, but obviously it was another impressive performance by Champ. And Sam won the Silver Cup by four and a half lengths. I know you did. You tipped him up. So well done to you for that. What do you think potentially for Cheltenham? Could he maybe line up in a, maybe an ultima or something like that? 
Yeah, he could. Uh, I don't think he's really a Shelton horse. Mm. I think he likes the flat nature of Ascot. Uh, I think it suits his front running style a little bit more. Um, he could go Alton if he wanted to. But, uh, I, I would stick to stick to what he, know, what he knows with uh, with Ascot. He's yeah. seen better around there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I thought it was. I, I was really. Thought it was a really impressive performance. We'll move into Tritonic, who won the Betfair Exchange Trophy pretty well as well. He's actually entered on Sunday in the Christmas Hurdle. There's a horse, obviously, who last year was set a visually impressive standard, standard in that graveyard for the triumph known as the Adonis. He might be one to keep an eye on. I'm not saying he's going to be Epiton or not so sleepy, but if he's when you look at that division, it's crying out for somebody like Tritonic to maybe step up a bit. Yeah, uh, he doesn't like Cheltenham. Uh, I think that's his problem there. Um, and I think he'd like it a little bit softer mm. uh, for Kempton, potentially. And maybe maybe Kempton's a little bit too sharp for him as well, I would say. So, yeah, um, I would stick with stick with Reese's like can I ask it in two mile stiffer handicaps. Yeah. Maybe, I don't know, at Newbury. Yeah, um, possibly, yeah. Could be quite dangerous off that and probably get a big weight but yeah he's he's gonna he's he's, a, he's that kind of four going five kind of in that tricky season as well so yeah he's gonna get the odd price here and there but I, I don't think it'll be anything big I think but he'll be winning stuff like similar to what he's been winning yeah Navin on Saturday a couple of horses to mention sealed in edge now two from two over fences you don't know maybe for, I don't think he's good enough to maybe go for a a marsh or a, a brown advisory but if he lined it up, lined up, maybe if he get into a paddy power play, would he maybe be worth watching? Yeah, he was a handicap. He was kind of standing dish in these handicaps last yeah. last season. Um, it took a while for him to share his main over hurdles, but he, he's, he, he has improved for a fence. And if he gets a, if he's around the similar mark to where his peak hurling days are, he'd, he'd, he'd be of interest in the uh, kind of. Um, maybe, I think you'd even pace to come back for a big grand annual. Yeah, that. possibly. Yeah, I mean, he's. I mean, he's certainly took defence as well. I mean, he's, he looks a better fe- chaser than Hubble. Yeah, he's a lot more. He's a lot more efficient. Um, his hurdling is kind of very hit and miss over hurdles. So, um, yeah, I think he just gives he gives the box a little bit more respect than he does with his hurdles. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, American Mike, eleven to four for the bumper. Let's get into this. I know. He looked he looked visually very impressive. He looks a he looks a top horse. Should he be eleven to four? I think he should. Yeah, um, we haven't seen much. Else. We haven't seen much, but I just I, I think I, I think I was maybe expecting so much more. He, he does it well. He, he looks a monster. He does, but he just it's you can't take anything off that form. No, he's not beating anything. But the time is good. Um, the section was it was truly run. He hasn't been in, but I can't take the form literally because the time time's good. The form isn't good, but you know nobody's really put their hat in the ring. So what what other alternatives do do we have at this point? I think you could see two or three this week that could potentially be a better bit of value than American Mike. I'm not saying American Mike won't win. I think he's obviously the clear standout horse of the bumper of the vision, but he I just don't know. I think I don't think he's beaten much at all. I oh. think last year was a Gerhard. I think because of what he he beat Let's Be Clear about it last year. So you were thinking, yeah, he's beat a decent horse. He's beat, it's been a decent yardstick. I think that's maybe it. I think that I'm maybe expecting more, but you yeah. can't knock him. You can't knock his time. You can't knock his visual impression he made. So it's it's really hard. I don't know. I I just yeah. I would be looking elsewhere, to be honest. We have barely seen any bumper horses. This yeah. Year. So you can only really focus on him. Um, he's the number one Elliot pick. He's going down the Sir Gerhard Envoy Allen tried and tested route. Yeah. He hasn't beat anything. The times do stack up as a kind of top potential top notcher. He's only he's only a four year old, but he, he does even look like the finished article in the paddock. You know, he does look a real complete kind of big strapping type of horse. The million dollar question, have you backed him? No, I haven't. I've, put, I've, I've got him in one multiple and that's it. Um, and I've seen absolutely nothing in Britain. Um, in the nah, I would agree with that. Henry II was quite good. 
but he's going to go Aintree, you'd imagine. So he, he, he will, he'll avoid Cheltenham. Nicky Henderson hates the race, so yeah. he's not going to put anything in it. So, I mean, you're effectively kind of wiping out the British challenge straight away, and he's only the one we've really seen contest these these proper races in Ireland. So you you, get, you have you get nothing to compare him to. Um, maybe Gordon Elliott or something else. I think he's probably his number one. So you're looking at Willie Mullins to come out with two or three, which he could do. And He did bring out one on Sunday. I'm, well, it's nice, actually. To, I'm, I'm going to probably just completely disregard what I said here, but Eva Grace, the one that won the bumper on Sunday, the one at Thurless, she won that very well. She's a, I think she's a sister to Bob, a half-sister to Bob Ollinger. She's out of Walk in the Park, who is a ridiculous record at the moment, if you've seen some of his wins. Yeah. So, yeah. see at 14 to 1 compared to 11 to 4, I would be siding with her. Yeah, but she's going to run. Um, that's the thing, right? Aye, that's the thing. You would probably I imagine it would be the mayor's bumper at Leopard's time they would go for with her. But. That's a valuable race, and he tends to, he tends to keep them there as, as mayors, doesn't he? Um, yeah, and it was really foggy. You could barely see anything. Ah, yeah, no, it just uh, we better uh, just put, she, she 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 got away from them quite well. Oh yeah, yeah, she she went impressively. The time was okay as well. So mm. yeah, um, yeah, I, I think we'll have as as you said. I think over Christmas, I think we'll have kind of can more candidates like her that, that could be worth weighing up, and then you have something to compare American Mike to, but. I keep say, I keep talking about this that I, I said it last week this facile Vega and I'm not saying I know you can't pick a horse off basically just opinion but if he was to win impressively just because of the pedigree he could go short. Yeah, well, I mean the start of the season that American Mike I think it was like 16, 20 to one. Yeah, kind of rumours of well is he can be the number one so you can take a dart that way. Yeah, right? and way they think they're going to go and connections to the race yeah I, I can see that I think well, Willie Mullins normally keeps his cars a little bit closer to his chest regarding bumpers and novices unlike unlike Elliot who he can maybe maybe just sneak and guess beforehand yeah final horse to mention on Wednesday at Ludlow Balco Coastal for Nicky Henderson who looks to have a really good Four or five good novice hurdlers, and this could be another one. 20 to 1 for the Ballymore. He kept on well over two miles. He would assume he's maybe going to be another one that could step up and trip. If he went in, maybe a Coral Cup, I if if he go, I think if he's good enough to go for the Ballymore, obviously goes for the Ballymore, but he could be top weight in a Coral Cup. Yeah, um, I would I would go supreme with him to be honest. Don't get mm. shot at um, he was he a penalty at Ludlow. Um and I think he, I think he probably fended off a decent skeleton horse in second in his debut, um, so that was well punted in. Um, I think he's, I think he's interesting. I, th- I think he's kind of, you do get that feeling that he's just a little bit below the best. Um, yeah. Slightly, mainly because Nicky Hayden's got a lot of talent in his yard, and you get him, I am Maximus, who dodged the great in behind. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like that, John Bond, Constitution Hill. You know, he does have plenty of options, and yeah, I, I, I have him kind of on a par with with I am Maximus. So if he does get a lenient mark, you could, you could easily <coughs> see one of the two maybe going handicapping um, and target them for a big a big festival. And Nicky Henson's record in the Coral Cups exceptional. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But yeah, another another exciting recap. That was us for this week. Right, Callum, we're going to get into it. The Christmas period, we have about five billion races to mention here. So we're going to just go through them individually, the, the big races over the, the festive period. We are going to start with the 26th and Box Day at Kempton. The Cottle Star Novices Chase, we have just got the entry, entries in right now and it's a four-runner race, but it is headlined by Brave Man's Game and Ahoy Senor. This could be a brilliant duel. Clash of the Titans, really. Um, yeah, it could be a terrific race. Between you'd imagine it'd be between those two, um, mm. yeah, and the other two probably won't get into it. Um, and there's two angles of looking at it really. Um, one is jumping, um, yep, Brave Man's game, the first circuit's probably getting more complete, so you'd be you'd want to be on him uh, at the start. But if the hoisting you're still there pitching and jumping quite well, then you, could, you might see it out better. 
Um, so, yeah, it's a fascinating duel, and I really don't know what side of the fence I'll be on, to be honest. I hoisted yours rated 157, Brave Man's Games 154. I, it's hard It's hard here to split them. It's kind of one of those races you just want to enjoy and think. The only thing, the wee thing here is over three miles, a hoy senor has beaten Brave Man's Game by seven lengths over hurdles. That could be quite telling. Yeah, and he's higher rated, but he's a little bit longer on the betting. Um, it's certainly not a fluke, but he won 66 to win at Aintree. No. He's really backed it up. His time is savage at Cheltenham on the clock. Yeah. He did unseat at Carlisle over a shorter trip, which it does make me wonder if, if Brave Man's game is so economical in jumping that is a hoisting yours jumping going to be under a bit more pressure? That's what I, that, that was the angle I can, I've come down on. That I think Brave Man's game just at a certain point in the race will just put a bit of pressure on a hoisting yours. And I think just he's, Brave Man's game just got a bit better pace, I think, and I think this will probably suit him more. But yeah, I think it's a more suitable assignment for Brave yeah. Man's game. Than a hoist in New York, but I, th- I think a hoist in New York will probably. I think he's got a better engine than Brave Man's game, and I think I think he'll see it out better. Um, so it's just it's just whether his jumping can can stand the early test that's that's going to be put under by by Brave Man's game, who is so who's so slick and quick over three miles. Um, that I think that's the, that's really the, the key to the race, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, so who are we going for? Let's have a wee, a wee, pick, a wee pick. I'll go for, I think, just Brave Man's game, just for me. No bet, but at, at the price, of giving a hoist in yours odds against, I, w- I, would, I would go a hoist in yours, because I, I, I would have them both 10 to 11. And, and Brave Man's game, 5 to 6, or hoist in yours at 11 to 10. I'd just say we're a hoist in yours, but it's, it's not really going to be a betting race, I don't think, for me. Yeah. Let's move on to Christmas hurdle. Let's we have we have to just talk about it. This is one of the weakest races I have ever seen at, for this type of race. Epiton, I love eight to eleven on yeah, not so sleepy eleven to four. Tritonic centered at five to one, so and glory six to one, glory and fortune thirty threes. You go, because I just I don't know what to make of this. Yeah, where are all the leading two milers? Um Epiton is now rated one five three, which is a yeah. Um, it's kind of gone down the estimations here. So our, our, our allowance still makes it level, but not so sleepy. Yeah. Not so sleepy. Um, is the ground going to be soft enough or not so sleepy? I'm not too sure. They both had a hard race at Newcastle, and School Royal kind of showed that when he kind of bombed out the contender puddle, really. Uh, I think mm. Alan King will be absolutely kicking himself that he ran Sue Royal in that and not here. Yes, I think I agree with that. I think Sue Royal would have a big, big chance at good ground at Kempton. Um, Tritonic, less so. I think ground's a bit of a worry for him. If not so sleepy, goes with the clappers and maybe soaring glory. It might, it might suit him. Maybe a tentative, tentative bet at the prices would be him. But um, yeah, and I'm quite worried about this two mile division now because I am it's so weak. Buying these. Uh, point to point horses over three miles. Yeah, the the two mile division seems to be kind of uh, seriously serious to lacking, particularly in hurdles. I think everyone's out to buy a gold cup horse rather than, mm-hmm. rather than a, a champion hurdle. We should say as well a couple of wee hangs here. Obviously, the this race is going to be a lot weaker without the legend that was Silver Streak. So a wee quick word on Silver Streak. How good a horse was he? Yeah, he had his best day in this race, didn't he? Sinking Epiton. Um, it was a really good animal horse and, and, a, and a leading light for the, for the Evan Williams stable. Yeah. Um, kind of a, an emotional time for them. They, they had Dan Sam winning at Ascot last week. They had a couple of big handicap winners that kind yeah. of softened the blow. But, you know, that's a, that's a game. Um, Nicky Hensley kind of went to the, the ringer as well with Buzz. So, um, yeah. Uh, it happens and uh, they, they do get really close to their horses and you know, when leading lights are stables and lights exhibition as well mm, exactly yeah so with these kind of small yards with stable stars in action it's, it's it's sad to see yeah so what are we going for for the Christmas hurdle I will take a wee punt and not so sleepy uh, if, if it stays decent ground and probably probably soaring glory as an outsider but Epiton. Epiton drifted out Newcastle as well to a really backable price, and I can see maybe something similar happening here um, potentially. So at the moment she's forty six, which is fair enough. But 
she's opposable um, and soaring goal is just about just about the one if if, if the pace set up works right. So. Yeah. Right, let's get into the King George. We are just going to go through the, the market briefly. Manelando 5 to 2, Clan de Zobo 11 to 4, going for his third King George. The defending champion Frodon's 9 to 2, a steering for Lange and Chantry House at 11 to 2 and 10 to 1 bar. Uh, I have went through this race and I've I've settled in two, but I'm going to let you go first. Yeah, it's a great, it's a great renewal. It is, it's brilliant, yeah. It's the foils of the Christmas holiday. This is a good race. Um yeah, I was quite sweet in Clan Del Wall. I'm kind of going off him um, a little bit. Uh, horses and horses that make their reappearance in the King George have a, quite a hideous record, it seems. Yeah. Um, it goes a little bit against the grain. Um, it's one of those races where you look at all the time, you kind of come come with different different results. Um, uh, Stephen Florence, I can't fully trust, but I do respect his chance. Um the track is only worry for Minalindo. Yeah. Um, to be honest, I don't think it'd be that much of an issue. It's just whether it's going to be his big kind of seasonal target. I don't think Frodon's going to get the three being France he did last year, and he also jumps left. That Kempton's not even really his ideal track. I think he was pretty primed to win it down Royal, so probably against him. Chantry House is short enough, but he's certainly interesting. Um, I do have a sneaky suspicion that he's going to run a big, big race in this. Um, but again, his rating and what he's done previously, he really sh- probably shouldn't be nine to two in this field. Um, lost in translation is another one that doesn't really keep himself sound. Don't think Kenton's his bag either. Nah. Uh, St. Calvados wouldn't really be for me. Neither would Tornado Fly, although I do see some people kind of liking him as an outsider. Um, he's, he, he plugged on okay in the John Durkin. Willie Mullins, you'd imagine his. It's a lot better than that, really, at home. So, and they'd probably go for the Savile's chase. Uh, and Mr. Fisher, I think, is quite interesting as an outsider. Um, That's what I've come down on him as an each way player, yeah. He is an each way player in his form behind Frodo and his neck, neck defeat at Sandown. It's decent form, and he didn't quite get a clean run last season at all. He was kind of campaigned over the spring. I just do wonder if he if he'll need it though. So yeah, it's just about Manila Indo for me, I think. Manila Indo, the thing with me, yeah, yeah, as the track, as it as he gonna be, as something else just gonna do him a bit for speed. I know I'm I sound insane. I I'm against Frodon. I think Frodon, I don't think Frodon will win this. Clan is Obo, I'd be a bit concerned that he's he's out. That's I, he usually needs to run, doesn't he? If a steering for launch, and I'm no, you can't trust him. You can't put him in a, you can't be trusting anything he does. He, he's always got a mistake in him. I think the jockey appointment here is very telling. I think Brian Cooper is the one jockey that I think gets a tune out of him. He was very good on him that day, that handicap at uh, Punchestown in April. I think that could be a big swing for a steering for launch, but he has to cut out these silly mistakes. I don't know. I, I, I'm, Manel Ando probably sets the standard. He's obviously the Gold Cup winner. He he would probably be, I think, I think he's the most likely winner, but I think the steering for launch is just if he just puts it all together. I think yeah. he'd win it. It's just it's just if. Um he, he, Brian Cooper would win quite well on in the John Durkin. There was no semblance of a mistake. No, there wasn't, but that's yeah. that's the yeah. thing. Yeah, he mm. flatters to deceive, well, yeah. Um it was a wild mistake, and he does it time and time again. So it's a king. I, I can't, I can't have him personally. Um, but yeah, he, it's, he it's one of those ones in it. You, you, you couldn't go and trust him, but if you don't back him and he wins, you'll kick yourself. That's why. That's what I'm feeling like now. That's yeah, yeah. I, I agree. I'm just gonna. That, and I, I, the Irish record recently in this race is is, is not good. No, that is not actually. Don't seem to. Properly target it, but this year I think they're making more of a fist of it. I think Manila indoors. I think on on the basis of his Gold Cup form, he should he should be he should be favourite. Simple as that. And yeah, I, would, I think he will be favourite. I, I, I would incline to back him um, at, at the moment, but yeah, my opinion on it changes 
hourly. Yeah, I mean, it might it might change here as opposed to the column that, well, that's going to go on Boxing Day. But right now, just for a wee sneaky hang, a stadium for launch. Just, but yeah, it's a tough one to call. Leopardstown is a couple of good races as well on Boxing Day. We have the Juvenile Huddle. Phil Dorr has entered. We thought he might appear at Chepstow, but the ground appears to be a bit just in the quick side. Phil, it could be Phil Dorr against Lona Power again. This could be another kind of decent race between those two. Yeah, Lona Power would get three pounds this time. Mm-hmm. Um, Britska's quite good as well. Uh, I think he's, he's, he may, might be more of a Fred Winter type down the line, but it's interesting that Gorney Alex entered, entered him as well. Um, I'd be hoping Phil Dorr goes out and confirms the form. Um, the, the ground question is a little bit, it's a little bit of a doubt when it comes to Cheltenham in terms of spring ground because yeah. it's all in ground. So, um, but he, he's getting away with it, um, and I think he's likely to get away with it here. Yeah, I think Phil Dorr will win. I think he will just be a bit better. I think. Yeah, it's interesting, but yeah, I'm gonna go for Phil Dorr. The racing post novices chase. This could be this is another kind of two horse race. Fernie Hollow, five to six for Willie Mullins. He's obviously going out to, to win well. Rivier de Tell was six to four. Now, the reason Rivier de Tell catches my eye a bit more is he is, she, sorry, is receiving every allowance under the sun. She receives a mayor's allowance and she also receives a juvenile allowance. So she gets nearly a stone here. Yeah, and Jack Kennedy is back for Christmas, which yes. is a big plus for the yard. Um. Yeah, she probably is the best form of book right now. Fairly Hall is probably more, certainly going to be more progressive in the Zarco called kind of main fancy. So if River the Tell is ever going to beat Fairly Hall, then Boxing Day is, is the day. Um, whether she will or not, I have a doubt. I think she might be a bit better right handed um, going that way around. So I think, I do think Fairly Hall would probably pick her up because she would quite like to go from the front. So I think. I think Fernie Hall will just sit and track and probably probably get there. Yeah, I thought Fernie Hall will win this. I know he's 2-1 to one now for the Arco, but I don't think... I think that price will be a a wish come that way. But yeah, I, I just think maybe the tell. With, with all those allowances, I think if she beat Fernie Hollow, I don't think much would change in terms of overall kind of prices. So I think that this could be maybe the tell's day in the sun. Limerick, we have the Faheen Novices Chase and we thought we were going to see Bob Ollinger. He is not going to go... Can you explain to me why Gabby Nacho's two to one favourite? Yeah, no, I can't really. Um, probably based on the Dunmore. Um, he's 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 short enough though. Um, That's weak. Once once he gets once he gets it right, he, he can really properly get it right. Um, I'm all over for it, Delaine for yeah. the best for Christmas. Um, I think he has excess stamina. He burn. He loves Limerick. It's going to be really bottomless ground. John Gain for the Hinks. Yes, back. he is. Yep. Book for that. Uh, back to Manny Post at fancy, fancy prices. Um, I think he's got a big, big chance. I expect him to win, to be honest. Fruit Delaine, I've settled on as well. Fire Attack as well is another horse who quite likes Limerick. He'll need to improve massively, but just right now, I mean, Vanillier, I just think it's too short. Master McShee was okay against Bob Bollinger. I think he will improve. Lieutenant Command, Lifetime Ambition, they've all won over course and distance, but yeah, I would maybe just go f- fire attack each way. I think it's, I'm not, I, I don't think that's a big race. I don't, I don't know why Bob, is it too soft for Bob Ollinger? I don't actually know. I've not heard anything to say why he hasn't gone because I thought this would be ideal for him. Too deep, yeah. Um, too deep. As soon as I heard, I'll just get it back for it delaying and I did. But uh, it's, still, it's, still, it's still probably, the trip's probably on the short side for Brook delaying as well. Mm-hmm. He beat Vanillier there last year in the grade two stairs huddle race. So he, he just likes it soft and he, he'll grind it out. And I think he does have a little bit of a little bit more gears than Vanillier does, who at 10 to 1 is quite big himself, to be honest. Um, I think this might be a bit too traditional again for lifetime ambition, uh, like it was in Gabinaco. I'd, I'd be against the more form. I don't think it was a good race. Nah, I thought it was a terrible race. Yeah, I'd, I'd be backing. Back fruit, fruit Delane and Vanilla, I think, is the other one that's probably interesting. Yeah. So, when well, you're going for Fruit Delane, I'm going to go for Fire Attack each way. Let's move on to the 27th. We've got a couple of races to mention at Chepstow. We have the Grade 1 Finale, Juvenile Hurdle. 
that's an open race. There's one I want to catch that's caught my eye, but I'm going to give it to you first. What do you think about this race? Uh, it's interesting. Um, it's going to be an interesting comparison into what the British form is to the Irish form, um, because it, most of the leading lights are here. Um, River Blessed probably sets just about the standard. Yeah. Um, I think the market's pretty spot on. You know, we've got Porticello in behind them. Sky Cutter's probably quite good. So, yeah, I think the market's got it pretty bang on. I'm not, not really overly bothered by having a bet in it. There's one horse kick now at 14 to 1 in this race that's, if you go into Sky Bet, I don't know if this is me just been me or. A Rocco for Oliver Greenall that's been bought by JP. I know he was a good flat horse, but he's 14 to 1 for this and he's 16 to 1 for the Triumph Hurdle. I take I, I imagine he's 14 to 1 because he maybe won't go, but if he was to turn up here what and, and he's that place for the Triumph Hurdle, you surely would think he's potentially one to keep an eye on. Yeah, he's out to 20s and um in Paddy Power. Um yeah. It's a strange one. I just that caught my eye straight away when I looked at the, the race. Yeah. He might not run. Um, it came from France, really. So again, again, it might not be soft enough. Yeah, on, on I day. think I would. I think I would just go for Skycut or for Philip Kirby. I think he's. If he goes, I think he could be a good one to keep an eye on. He was good at Musselburgh. He beat that horse at Donald McCain's. It was that was quite eye catching last time. He, I think he could potentially be a good one to keep an eye on. Forever blessed, obviously sets a good standard. But yeah, I'm going to go for Skycut. Yeah. Um, if it was positive for Ben, maybe Saint Segal, um, tens. Uh, he was really good at buying. Uh, mm-hmm. you know, it looked like he needed the run as well, but he, he still bolted in. So um, he'd probably be just about the one at, at the odds. We'll move on to the Welsh National. Obviously, uh, one of the highlights of the Christmas period. Secret Reprieve is obviously going for a, another one in the race. Nine to two. The big dog six to one. Highland Hunter seven to one. Hold that thought. Sevens as well and twelve to one bar. Native River, 14 to 1 is my pick. You back Native River. I'm back Native River. He's too old. He's too old. He's, there's nothing else in here that I really fancy at all. No, it's it's one of those, it's like uh, it's it's like I stayed in for lunch, I'm backing him because if I don't back him and he wins, I'll kick myself. Yeah, I, I quite like Hill 16 of Sandy Thompson. He ran really well in the in that big attrition race in the left for this one. Uh, yeah. 16s, but I don't. I just don't think native 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 rivers mark like still one six six. I know. Way too high top weight. It's gonna be. It's gonna be really tricky for a minute. It's not gonna be soft enough, is it? To be honest. Um, In all seriousness, I think I like Vinisha yeah. Williams. Hold that thought. I think I would maybe just come down on him. In all seriousness, but yeah, it's. Yeah. I don't really. Have, I don't. I don't think Secret Reprieve will do it again. I just don't. The big dog. I would oppose him. I'd maybe just come down and hold that thought where we are we sneaky one in, in Native River just for that reason. Yeah, I quite like Hill 16, but it's, it's a wee race. And the presence of Native River makes, makes basically everything kind of run off like, you know, nine, nine and a half stone. Yeah. And there's a bomb in the handicap, so it's it's really unusual in that, in that sense that there's going to be such a big kind of handicapping disparity between the two. So I would, I would probably lean towards Hill 16. Slightly the price right now, but I'd certainly be waiting till the day to, to see what what the final weights are because it's going to it's, it's quite lopsided. Yeah, definitely. Let's move into Kempton. A couple of races to mention: the Wayward Lad, novice Chase. This just looks a penalty kick for Edward Stone. He should win this easily. He should, but I am quite good at track with him. I, I don't think Kempton is his bag really. Um, I think he's kind of a stamina two miler. Um, and they saw that to really good effect with him. Yeah. He, he, third time lucky. Um, he, he's miles clear, 20 pound clear. So he, it shouldn't be too much of a problem. But it'll certainly be a no bet race for me. Um, me solo without the favourite, he, he's improving. He's back at Kempton, which he, he likes. So he, he could be the one without the favourite. Aye, I mean, Edward Stone for me should just win this comfortably. The Desert Orchid, I know this is going to be one that's potentially, this might change in the next couple of days. Shishkin has entered. He is going for a race course gallop, I believe, today. If it's not today, it's tomorrow. If he goes, if he goes for this race, 
it could be keen, but I, I could be keen to see how he does. I don't know. I just don't know if I think it all depends on if he turns up. He gets three pounds from Genetine as well if he goes here. Yeah. Um, the one I like is the one that gave Shishkin a mild scare at Aimsy. And it's okay. been unbelievably similar. I think he's a horse in this to back now in case Shishkin doesn't turn up. Because I think Grenatine, I don't think Kempton is, is Grenatine's bad at all. Um, I'm a bit surprised that he's, he's going to be here. With a quick round at Kempton. He might get outpaced in this time. Shishkin will win if he turns up, probably. Um, but still up in the air slightly. Um, Two to one ones, arguably generous in a way, but phenomenally civil. Just gonna, just gonna run out of it. Um, last time out, a step back and trip to here. I think looks a good move, and I think he he can go quite well from the front. Yeah, that's. I mean, that's hard to argue with that. I mean, it's that. That's that race. I'm just gonna sit and watch. Let's move on to another interesting one at Leopardstown, the two mile one, the Paddy Rewards Club Chase. It looks as if Energy Mean isn't going, so it could leave Shaq Amplesois and Envoy Allen. That's another one I would just sit and watch because I can't. Two horses I love, but I can't pick what one I trust more right now. Uh, Shaq Amplesois wins. Think so? He's £15 clear of Envoy Allen. Would you not be worried about how he's ran last time? No, I'm more worried about Envoy Allen. He's not a grade one horse, so... I just had, there's nothing in here like Envoy Allen you can't trust either Battle of Adoy in size and Potsy they're the only other two in the race exactly that kind of shows you I think Shaq and Crossway ride them aggressively if he bounces back to any semblance of form he'll win yeah I think if Shaq and Crossway goes I can't believe he's 2-1 I've got I've got 11 to 4 down here but I don't know if this is just a mess of the they've not adjusted the prices by uh, Energy Me now I'm surprised I don't know what's happened with Energy Me to be fair what happens? Uh, it might be ground related. Could be. Yeah, I mean, it's it's interesting right now. We're doing. Well, we should say we're doing this as soon as the entries for Monday are coming out. So we're not exactly you know, sure what's turning up yet. But Shaq and Persua, I do agree. If he turns up to his best, he'll beat Envoy Allen because I don't know why they're running Envoy Allen over two mile one. The two, the next one is the future champions novices hurdle, and there's six runners in this. I thought we would see Kilcrut here. We're not going to. It's Largy debut sets the standard. Grangie's in here. Mighty Potter, Three Stripe Life, Far Out, and Arctic Warrior. I think Largy debut will win. Uh, potentially, yeah. Um, I'm interested to see how Mighty Potter goes. Um, I quite like him. Uh, I thought he was the one to take out of the Royal Bond. Uh, the way the race went didn't quite suit him. He was keen. He never really get a clear run. New staying on again at the line. Interested if three spike life turns up here. Um how about a first run of a hurdles in, in a race of this nature? It seems tricky, mind you. Um and Largy debut looked quite good putting away Kill Crook. So it's a decent little race. Um wouldn't be betting at this point. Yeah, it's tough. I would I would probably just go for Largy debut. I think he will win this. The 28th, a couple of horse races to mention. The Christmas hurdle, it's Classical Dream two to one, Floor and Porter nine to four, Ronald Pomp's higher the belly six to one. You're you've obviously tipped Abacadabras for the seven uh, for the stairs. Uh, he's in here at seven to one. This is probably gonna be a stamina test for him. What do we think? This is a good race. Good race if they all show. Um I think Gentleman's Game is a entry in the pair top qualifier as well. So interesting to see what one he takes up. Um it's just whether this rain will come in Leopardstown for Classical Dream. Yeah. Um, indication in some of the entries of the final declarations for the other two days suggest that Willie Mullins is not really particularly happy with the ground that's, that's, that's going to come up. And, and Leopardstown's quite notorious for drying out quite quickly as well. Yeah. Particularly on the hurdles track. So I would be surprised if, if Classical Dream went here and... Um, I think Florin Porter is the one to beat. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I would probably just go for Florin Porter as well. I think the ground's going to be too soft for classical dream. Florin Porter, I think, I think now looking back, he would have won that race that he fell in a, a few weeks ago. So, yeah, Florin Porter for me, this is a, a, again, it's a race 
abacadabras, if he stays the trip, would you go with him? Yeah, this is a start of the experiment. Um, if he stays, uh, probably he's probably a big, big chance. I think he's, he's quite sleepy in the race behind Honeysuckle. You know, he, he was out, he's really out the back and he kind of stayed on moderately for third. Mm-hmm. Um, he got the two and a half mile trip fine at Aintree, which is a bit of a surprise to most people. But I think he's he's, he's a lot more kind of he's a lot more kind of laid back now. He's he's given himself every chance again the trip. They know they can't beat Honeysuckle, so they'll try this route with him. Um, I would like to see him hurdle a bit better than he has been. Yeah. I mean, recently though, um, he needs to be a little bit more fluent. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm hoping for a kind of nice staying on performance because I, I do think he's a, I do think he's a better horse uh, in the spring. Yeah, and uh, that's good. That's good. An interesting race. A lot of stories to come from that. The Savills Chase Apotard at eight to eleven. Obviously, looking to to do well like he did at Haydock. This could be. He might be under a bit of pressure here. You've got Lisa Galvin, Delta Work, Kenboy, Janadil. It's not as easy as a lot of people are thinking. I think. Yeah, I mean, I've had a anti post saver at Delta Work at fourteen. Mm-hmm. He's in his sixes and. You'd imagine Jack Kennedy will go. Yeah, I think he will, yeah. Galvin will be on, Davy Russell will be on Galvin. Um, I mean, Aplutard does set the clear standard, though. I mean, Haydock, he looked like he improved from the Gold Cup second. He won this last year. Um, I do think he'll probably win it again. But at odds on, you can probably just leave him alone and see him win. You wouldn't be surprised if Kenboy ran a big race or, or something like that. Yeah. Delta work can put it all together then it's useful but again he'd be one that need a little bit more rain I think as well yeah I think you could see potentially Applecard going even shorter for the Gold Cup I do think he will win I, th- I, don't, I think he will get a tough race I think Galvin will, will push him to his limit but yeah I think Applecard will win the 29th just a few races before we move on to our anti-post picks the Naval Hotels and obviously Chase this does look quite good there's a few in here Beacon Edge Run Wild Fred Three to one. You've got on the ropes at nine to two. Fury Roads in there. Vinay, Vinay, I think will probably go here. This could be good. I'm probably just settling on Run Wild Fred. Yeah. Um, I hope Cobbler's Way comes up. That'd be yeah, good. I've seen that. I've seen his entity. Yeah, uh, it's nice to see him uh, still around by all accounts. Uh, yeah. Fury Road is kind of Fury Road. He he, he did massively. Dog it last time, didn't he? Yeah, a bit of a rogue. Um, interesting to put headgear on him to try and to try and kind of get his natural ability out because it is certainly there. Um, he would be of interest. Yeah, I, th- I think Gordon Elliott does hold the key in this race, doesn't he? Yeah, um, I would think so. Yeah, well, Fred has all the experience. I hope on the ropes wins, but I just think he might struggle here. Yeah, I mean, he's only fours, isn't he? He's, he, he, he shaped as if he kind of needed it and stayed on in the in the old Hennessy. Um, yeah, I, I do think Run Wild Fred's probably the one to beat him. Yeah, I would think so, yeah. The Matheson Hurdle, we have Sharjah setting the standard at 11-10, obviously won the Morgiana, loves this course. Zani here, 4-1. to one. Echoes and Rain, 7-1. to one. You've got likes of Saudi, Tia Hupu, Calixios. I think potentially I've heard that Tia Hupu and Calixios go for the race at Limerick on the same day. Sharjah's probably just going to go with one, isn't he? But I would give a slight mention to Echoes and Rain, and I'll explain why, and I'm not the only one that's thinking this. I think Echoes and Rain will suit potentially the, the front running of Petty Mushwar. I think the pace being a lot stronger could suit Echoes and Rain. Yeah, it needs to be. It needs to bring out a lot more from her. It's even accounting that tactically it was a mess and it was a tricky kind of small field race last time. It was still was quite a horrible performance, to be honest from um, I could see that angle, a bit of genuine pace. I, I just, I'd like to see her also just stride on a little bit there. Yeah. Uh, they kind of overplayed the restraining game there on 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 a reappearance. I think. Um, it's a, I think Evans is more than fair for Charger. I, I do think Charger will win. I just think this is his ideal scenario. I would just think though maybe Echoes and Rain just maybe will do a bit better get a bit closer than she did at uh, the Morgiana you going with Sharjah here? Yeah, yeah. Petty Bushwell's presence even suits Sharjah Yeah it, I would say so yeah even suit Sharjah it, on debut and did he beat it Patrick Mills was going to look warm in Sharjah's chances of turning up here um, so it wasn't 100% so 
wonder if there's a small kind of thing going on there, but if he turns up, he should really should win. Yeah, quite worried about the Charlo as well. Well, obviously, we'll, we'll, we don't know the entries for the Charlo yet, but I think it could be potentially Paul Nichols sending either Stage Star or Mr. Glass. What do you think about the Charlo? Obviously, we don't know the entries yet, but anything you think could or should go to the Charlo? Stage Star would probably be one. Um, yeah. Lossy move of Tom Lacey was quite Yeah, good. yeah. Guessing if he goes here, I think that was the plan. So they're probably the, the main two I would take away. But Mr. Glass probably more of a three miler. Um and given Brave Man's game won it last year. Um whatever Paul Nichols runs is certainly gonna merit a lot of respect and probably take a lot of beating. But lossy mouth for Tom Lace is, is one that's quite useful, I think. Yeah, definitely. We are gonna obviously for the next four days from the twenty sixth to twenty ninth we'll have tips out on our website and obviously the myself and Callum will obviously put some out on Twitter. It's gonna be a fantastic week. Anything that we haven't mentioned that you fancy for the the Christmas period? No, I'm really waiting. Um, waiting to see the final declarations in terms of uh, handicaps and, and things like that. Um, yeah, I would rather keep my powder dry at this stage. Yeah, that was our look at the Christmas period for this, this year. We're going to move on to our anti-post picks and these have taken a span on the works in the past five minutes. But yeah, I mean, we're going to just put them on, on the screen just now. Callum, we're recording this while the Leopardstown entries have been declared. We have had to do a bit of a rethink here, haven't we? Yeah, um, I was expecting Ginto to go to Limerick for the 2 mile 7 um, and he's been taken out. Which is a bit annoying because I, I would quite have liked it. I still do quite like him for the Albert Bartlett. Um, but I would, have, I would have more liked him if he was in that race and deep grinding ground because it's a race at Fury Road 1 before Gornel at St. Bartlett. And it was... Um, for it, Billy beat Vanilla there um, mm-hmm. last year. Um, so, yeah, that's a bit of a curveball, but the one I'll be going for is Jerry Colombe at 50 to 1 for Albert Bartlett. Very good. He's entered down Royal Boxing Day um, yep. and a, and a maiden, um, over two mile four. He also has another one over two mile five. Um, but he's, he has declared for the two mile four race. Um, and he, he was just a novice. I really felt he was a bumper horse that I really, really liked. And I think he's just been completely forgotten about for a long, long time. I haven't pulled the trigger because I've been waiting for him to be running and being entered. The ground is going to be soft enough down Royal. Um, probably good to soft, so you get away with that. Uh, Dennis O'Regan is on board, and 51, I think, is, is massive in relation to some of his visually impressive bumper horse. Uh, his bumper efforts were quite good. Uh, Gordon Elliott traditionally has a decent record in the Albert Bartlett. He's already got a couple that are near the market there. Affirmation, Ginto, Hollow Games. It's it's a bit of a guessing game and whether how he's going to split them up at the moment, even yeah. though yeah. it might be a bit of a guessing game. So, um, yeah, one of them will probably go Ballymore, one of them will go Albert Bartlett, one of them might stay at home, for instance. But uh, I'm against placing Carl. I don't think he jumps well enough. Particularly, and I think you know Jerry Colomb at fifty one is quite big. And if he wins his, if he wins in taking fashion, uh, on debut and hurdling debut, then he'll probably go shorter. But I, I like how he's at like two mile four. That that does suggest he's going to go. It's going to go up and trip. I do think he's a stayer. And, yeah. and Rob Core is journey with me for probably for the Palin or something like that. So I'd imagine he'd be he'd be aimed at the Bartlett. Yep. I am going to go for a Henry de Bromhead horse. I am going to go for Largate debut at 12 to 1 for the Supreme. Obviously, beat Kilcrut in the maiden hurdle that obviously we fancy. Kilcrut was the shortest price ever to be beaten in a race in Ireland. Largate debut, I think there was something about him that day that just caught my eye a lot. He has entered the grade one on the 27th. I think if he wins that, he could potentially go maybe 6, 7 to 1. I think 12 to 1 right now is a big price. Kilcrut was catching my eye for this race. I think there was a bit of a an overreaction to him. Mm-hmm. He has entered for the two mile four and he's also entered for the Lawlers of Nace. So I have a feeling that Willie Mullins has done a bit of a U-turn and is going to aim him towards going up and trip. So I'm going to settle for a large debut for the Supreme Novices Hurdle at 12 to 1. Yeah, um obviously the Nicky Henderson pair are kind of dominant in that the Irish the leading Irish protagonists haven't really shown their hand yet apart from Kilcrook perhaps disappointing, but I, I do think that 
a lot of the focus that day was on Kilcrut not winning rather than yeah. Largy debut was and potentially could be. So he's still just about a fair enough each way price. So yeah, I wouldn't grumble about that. And obviously could could shorten if he if he does the business at, at Christmas. Yeah, definitely. It's good. Another round of anti post packs through as well. It's been a it's one we've had to magically kind of come up with, isn't it? It's it was obviously Kai Boss a wee bit, but yeah, we've yeah. got there. Yeah, it came off the subs bench a little bit. Yeah, all the plans are fluid, you know, for trainers and particularly if they're backing them all up towards Christmas, then they have to find a way to juggle it about and so, so do punters, don't they? So it's it's yeah. all about it's all about uh, timing and, and finding the right one. Um the Ginto plan was kind of uh, derailed. It was mainly mainly based in Limerick, so um, and running there. But the fact he didn't means it's still up in the air with those two. So it's not as as up in the air with Jerry Colomb and at least he's fifty to one, not twelve to one as well, which is a bit of a plus. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, but that is we are going to wrap up this week's episode of the show. Calm. It's been an absolute pleasure as always. Have a very merry Christmas and a very profitable punting week. Yeah, you too. Brilliant. So we will obviously be back. We will. I think we'll maybe be back on the Friday. We'll obviously be announcements of when we're going to return for next week's show. We'll look back on all the week's racing. To all our viewers, thank you very much for watching. Have a wonderful Christmas and a very profitable punting week. And we will see you after the Christmas period. Thanks very much, everyone. We'll see you soon. Cheers.